MyMoof University YouTube videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moofuniversity.com, click on the pay-what-you-like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you, and enjoy. Ethanol, ethyl alcohol. Humans drink it, they've been drinking it for ages, and we know it causes health problems, and I kind of want to sort of bring up this one that relates to fatty acid synthesis. Excessive alcohol consumption and leading to um, leading to fatty liver. So the first thing we need to know about ethanol is that it cannot be excreted in our urine. It needs to be metabolized. In fact, urine drug tests do not actually test for ethanol. They test for the metabolites of it. One of those is ethyl glucourinate, also known as uh, ETG. I really don't know too much about that. Uh, if you're interested, maybe conduct a Google search of that. But the point is that it must be metabolized. And one of the key ways that ethanol is metabolized in the liver is in these two steps here. <coughs> Excuse me. So ethanol is first converted to acetaldehyde, in which this is an oxidation reaction here. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called alcohol dehydrogenase. And we've actually seen this enzyme before in um, alcohol fermentation. Um, but in that case, alcohol dehydrogenase catalyzed the reverse reaction so as to regenerate NAD plus for glycolysis. In this case, we're making NADH because we're going towards the acetaldehyde. So this gives us NADH, and which we know, of course, can give us energy. And then in the mitochondria, the acetaldehyde can be further oxidized to acetate by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. And that, of course, uses an NAD plus to give us an NADH. And um, so we get NADH out of this. So whatever, like who cares? What's the significance here? Well, the significance is that with excessive alcohol consumption, this will be happening a lot, like a lot. So <laughs> so we'll have a, a, a crazy buildup of NADH, which increases the NADH to NAD plus ratio. Now, this NADH NAD plus ratio can cause a multitude of problems. And uh, I'm not going to go into all of them. Some of them, I'll just mention them here briefly, um, like hypoglycemia, uh, hyperglycemia. Um, there can be um, uh, ketoacidosis, all those different things. They, they all have to do with excessive alcohol consumption. So, but um, I'm not going to talk about all of those. I'm only going to talk about how this ratio affects um, uh, fat metabolism. So uh, this buildup of NADH, what it causes or what it does is it does two things. Uh, it inhibits beta oxidation and it allows fatty acid synthesis to occur. So the question is, how does that actually happen? Well, if you recall, in beta oxidation, uh, we created a bunch of FADH2s and NADHs. So um, if we're already having an you know, if we have an excessive alcohol consumption, we have these reactions occurring frequently, right? All these dehydrogenase reactions occurring. We have a, we're using up a lot of NAD pluses and making a lot of NADHs. We have a buildup of NADH. Then beta oxidation doesn't need to happen, right? Because then we have plenty of NADH. We don't need to make more, right? And beta oxidation would then be inhibited. There's no sense in creating more if there's already plenty around, right? So. So what's the deal here then? So now we have a buildup of this high NADH. We've already said that it inhibits beta oxidation for the reason that we just mentioned. Another thing is that these high NADH levels signal plenty of what I call energy to be. So we know that these NADHs are worth 2.5 ATP when reoxidizing the electron transport chain. So they represent um, uh, soon to be energy, right? Soon to be ATP or energy to be as I put it. So if there's a bunch of this NADH, that means that this could be sensed as a sort of high energy state, right? Which is the type of state that you want if you want fatty acid synthesis to occur, right? Fatty acid synthesis is a form of uh, is a way to store energy, right? And if we we would store energy only when we have plenty of it. So high NADH levels indicate that high energy to be, um, so they, it's sensed as a high energy state, and so fatty acid synthesis will occur in the liver, and that will be followed by triglyceride synthesis or fat synthesis um, in the liver as well. So we're like, storing this, the, the energy as fat in fatty acids and, and um, followed by storing them as, uh, as triglycerides or fats. And this is happening in the liver. So 
like I said, we have to emphasize this point of excessive alcohol consumption. This could happen a lot, and over time, and um, uh, this what this can cause is this can co this this buildup of fat over time and and um, uh, progression. What it can happen is it can lead to this thing called fatty liver, um, which is really just excessive fat storage in, in, in the liver, and this could uh, damage uh, liver cells. And of course, if the liver cells are damaged, um, they might not be able to work as prop properly or as well. And it might even cause, uh, depending on the severity, it could cause cell death. And uh, liver cell death is obviously a problem. Your liver is incredibly important for a variety of reasons, including maintaining your blood glucose levels and um, and detoxifying poisons that, poisons that enter your body. So if your if your liver is not working, liver failure can have is that's well actually that's the definition of liver failure. Your liver not working the way it should. Um, that that could that could be a serious problem that could lead in death, lead to death. So um, this is why this is one of the reasons, one of the the many reasons that excessive alcohol consumption uh, can be detrimental to one's health. So I hope that video was helpful and interesting in this uh, in the in that it's a clinical correlate to the topic of fatty acid synthesis. Thank you for watching.